the flour, and then I'm going to glaze while the flour is freezing, and then I'm going to spray the flour and garnish. The garnish, the actual garnish in this, after the glaze is done, the flour is done, is like three seconds. So it's the prep up to that that gets a little bit tricky. What I suggest you guys do when you do this is that you have a team of four, a team of three, however. Have one person temper chocolate for everybody. It is the same exact technique that you have done already. There's no surprises. It's white chocolate, temper it. Um, have one person get the glaze going for everybody. Make sure it's the right temperature, setting up the turntables, getting torches, getting cardboards, getting whatever you need. Um, and then have two people setting up the flowers, cutting the strips of paper, getting everything ready, um, you know, getting your mise en place together. That way, if the chocolate's ready, you can all just jump on making flower petals. And if the glaze is ready, you can all just go, okay, let's go glaze real quick. Because if you, it's like, you don't need four people to temper chocolate, you don't need two people to temper chocolate, you don't need two people to watch glaze. So like, working it that way makes it a lot faster of a whole thing than trying to do every single thing yourself, especially when it's like temper chocolate, you know, glaze, it's not working. So, um, that's my suggestion. Take it. You're going to need your glaze at about 115. Mine's already at 93, so I'm just going to microwave it right before I need it. I'll do my flour first. Because you can glaze first if you want to, or you can make your flour first if you want to. It does not matter at all. Because once the glaze is on, you unmold your entremet, you set it aside, just like we did the other day. And it needs to defrost. It can defrost. It will defrost. So it can defrost while you're making your flour. But if the glaze is ready and you're waiting for it, might as well make your flour first. You know what I'm saying? So just make it happen so at the end of the day you have glazed entremet and flour that's ready to be put together and you okay? Um, so I'll work on my flour and then I'll just reheat this when I'm ready. So I have my chocolate here. It's tempered as far as I know. I'm going to make a little test strip. I'm going to cut the paper that I need. So each team of four, you want to probably do two pieces of paper because you each need probably like four strips and you can get eight strips out of one piece. One piece, just line it right up at the edge of the table. Let me use this a little bit later. This is going to get, I mean, if you're really messy, you're going to end up dribbling chocolate on the floor. So if you feel like that might happen, put a piece of parchment or something down there so that we don't have to scrub the floor later. Onto the edge, you're going to take your paring knife. Now, my paring knife is maybe a little shorter and skinnier than yours, but that's not really a big deal. What is important is that when you place your knife on the paper to swipe, that you have the same height as me. Width isn't so important, but height is. So you'll see that I'll probably dip my knife a lot lower into the chocolate than you will, but at the end of the day, as long as the height is correct. So I have my tempered white chocolate here. I'm just going to fill this cup with my chocolate. I have a couple chunks, but they're not too bad, so I'm just going to live with them instead of potentially cooling my chocolate too much by cheese loving it. You guys can do whatever you feel comfortable with. I think the smoother, the better, honestly. So this makes it really convenient, even between two people, because you don't have to like swirl around your knife to get it covered in chocolate. You just dip it in, take it out. So um, dip the knife in, tap it, scrape it, flip it, and then press very evenly, pull up, and lift off. All right? You don't need to, it's not so dramatic, you don't need to lift it really high, but just enough so that you're not pressing down and, and pushing. If you press down, you're going to end up with parchment showing in between your petals, and they'll probably crack in the middle. So if you pull up, it gives you a little bit more thickness in the center of your flower petal. And if you're lucky, you get a little line sometimes as well. So see that my petals are approximately like, I don't know, what is that, five-sixths of the strip. They're not the entire strip, but they're close. All right, if you go for the entire strip, chances are your petals are going to curve too much in that gutter mold and your, um, that's a little chunkier than I thought, 
uh, your petals are going to have a funny shape. They're not really going to sit nicely on the, when you build your flower, it's going to be like too curved in, so just be aware. So if you are doing this process, and I have a metal table, so it's kind of chilly, you have wooden, it's a little bit better. If you are doing this process and you realize that as you get towards the end of your strip, the petals on the beginning of your strip are setting up and you can't bend them, you want to cut these strips of paper in half this way and work half at a time so that you don't end up with uh, petals that won't bend. So whatever makes you successful. And it's also quite important that your knife hangs over the edge of the table so the hilt of your knife does not get in the way of the petal process. Because see how the ends of my petals are all flat, somewhat some? That's kind of in, sort of necessary for the building of the flower. So like I said, three strips. I'm just going to do two and a half because I know I can make it happen on two and a half. And I'll show you guys some options for leaves with the last little bit of my paper. You can also do these at angles, but I prefer that you go straight today. Not crooked, if you will. Are you talking of short people problems? Yeah. You know, it's a good thing I'm on the back table. Yeah, right? Everybody had to call me and I was there every time. So for the leaves, there's a couple different options. You can use some leftover petals as they are. You can also use your knife and just do this at an angle in one direction or the other or both. And the steepness of the angle is kind of up to you. Go this way, or that way, or a combination thereof. Oh, don't do that. Did you see that? <laughs> sort of. Not really. Edit, edit, edit. Don't edit, 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 edit. edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> say. There we go. Um, I like to use my offset, mini offset. So just a inch about chocolate, and then instead of making sure I have a straight edge, I actually work up a little higher at an angle and make it kind of messy. And then I use these backwards so that that messy edge is sort of like an abstract leaf kind of textury thing. So I'll do that. Um, these petals, besides making flowers with them, they are very convenient to just have, I guess say, just hanging around in your bake shop. I had a whole cabinet full of chocolate garnishes in my shop that I would just continually like refill and replenish as necessary. And these were always in there. Lots and lots of these, different shapes, different sizes, different knives, whatever. Uh, really convenient just to have around. Petit gâteau, just one little petal and a quenelle of whipped cream or something like that. Uh, nice, elegant garnish, really fast. Or if you need to make a really fast flour, you know, you have all the Can you explain things. The, uh, Yes. Which way do you I would put that like behind the flower okay. and then the rough part would stick out. Okay. I like how you use the word avant-garde. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll show you because that's the way I'm going to do it online. Okay. Um, what I have here is just, I, I made a mistake and I told you guys to take your modeling chocolate home, forgetting that I was going to use it for this little sphere. So I have some modeling chocolate here, but I also have some marzipan. Same thing, whatever. There's already almond all throughout our entremet anyway. So. Um, so I just made a little sphere. This fits inside your second largest ring cutter. So like, the, not the little one, but the next one up. If it doesn't fit in there, that's too big because you're going to end up looking like your flower has a big nose. So a little sphere, put it on a toothpick, dip it into the chocolate, a little dipping motion. Try not to lose it in the chocolate. That's always awkward. And then into some of this sugary stuff just to make it sparkly. So this Sparkles. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. And then if you realize there's a little too much chocolate, sometimes it gets a little chunky down the bottom, you just clean it. And if you happen to have an extra piece of Mars pan or something, that's always good. So after you have your petals, your leaves, and your center made, you can go ahead and with the assembly of this. You're gonna, for me anyway, I'm going to use this little cardboard and parchment. Don't glue your flower to a cardboard, it's not gonna come off. 
if you do. <laughs> it's just kind of happy. It's not fun. So, take a little square of parchment, or not a square, and place it down. I'm using a teeny cardboard. You can use that eight inch, whatever is around. Um, if you guys glaze first, like I had mentioned, you'll have extra cardboards from your that are a little bit dirty. <coughs> use those just because they're not brand new. All right, so I'm going to build up my flour as quickly as possible because I want you guys to do this today. So don't manhandle your petals. They're fragile, right? Am <laughs> I manhandling? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't manhandle. <laughs> I'm very good at this. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a snob. I've just done it a lot. So It's like you know your medium. So you know what you can do with it. You just rip yeah. those off of it. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just didn't want you guys to think that it looked easy, like it's easier than it looks. Then I'll put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get a decent amount unmolded, pick through them a little bit and decide which ones you like the best. You know, there's always going to be a couple duds, so take those out so you don't end up using them. I like to line them up because this process of building this flower is much easier if you just have everything at your fingertips. So, probably not gonna need that many. So put those there. Save these because you'll need a few of them for the, um, for the placement as well as possibly these. Just if we use those. So you wanna have your chocolate still somewhat fluid. It doesn't have to be like maximum temperature, but you know, something that's gonna still flow somewhat some. Just grab yourself a couple tips. They don't have to be anything particular, just something. Start with the center, a little bit of chocolate, keep your area as clean as you can when you do this, like having chocolate all over the place and broken petals and just makes you unsuccessful, so try to keep it organized. Right there, first three go in. Slide it underneath into that blob of chocolate. And then, you know, start to maneuver the petals around. Using your tips, slide them into place so that they stand up curved a little bit more than what they normally would be around the center. Sometimes these little tips don't do the trick. Once you're there, second three, I usually go right in on top, and that kind of helps me to hide some of the glue but yet still have nice, beautiful petals. So I'm actually not going underneath, I'm going like within the little, I don't want to say crevice, but that's the word I'm gonna use. The first six are important. I really want to see them somewhat even, somewhat nice, somewhat organized around this center, all right? After that, it's still important that there's a certain symmetry to it. I don't want to say symmetrical, because that's not really the word, but you don't have to have like only six or only eight. It's just however many fit. So I usually just start on one end and work my way to the other. You can probably remove these as soon as you can, as long as the petals aren't gonna fly back. If you need them again for your second row, use them. If not, don't. It's really gonna be a, a, a personal thing. Each petal, dip it a little bit. See how I have a little bit of chocolate built up on the top and a little bit on the bottom and slide it in making sure that I've got contact between the glue and the, the bottom set of petals. Don't leave it too far out. Slide them in and that's where the height of your petal comes in handy. If you make them too tall and they are too curved, you will not be able to get them in. They will stick out here somewhere because there's just not enough space. So make sure they're not too long. So I'm going to work my way, work my way around. Too much glue equals ugly flour. Too little glue equals no flour. Okay, so make sure you got a happy medium going. I always hesitate to tell you not to use too much because then I get the other end of the spectrum where someone's like, Chef, I have no flour, just fell apart. So I think a little glue showing is better than a no flour at all. So you have to do what you have to do. I'm just gonna go around sliding these petals into place, trying to keep my flour round, trying to keep the um, disc, like how far I shove each petal in, kind of equal all the way around, so I don't end up with something oval at the end, or something that has like three rose petals on one side and two on the other, just because the spacing doesn't make sense. So just kind of keep an eye on 
how far you push these, where they are. If you need to, you can release the pedal from the parchment to slide them in a little further. Sometimes they get stuck. So how many rows out do you think we should do? I usually do two, but you can go more if you want to. It's really a personal preference. I could make this bigger and just go another row, or I could stop. I usually stop just for sheer, like, we've been doing this demo for 45 minutes now and I'm done. Um, and I do think that after a while it gets to just be a little too big. As long as it's round and relatively even, I'm, you know, happy. And if you're lucky, you can kind of finagle the pedals, like, like you put one in and then the next one, the one behind it, is still a little movable, so you can kind of wiggle them around a bit. I'm going to put this thing into the freezer. We're going to be airbrushing with liquid cocoa butter. So if you've never dealt with that before, it has to stay warm, so I have to open the oven right now. So we're going to be playing with the heat gun a little, and, and there may be times where it gets a little frustrating, and I'm sorry. But um, when you airbrush chocolate, you can't use airbrush color because it's liquid, right? And water and chocolate don't mix. So in order to make it perfect, and the way you would do it in the industry, we're using airbrush, airbrushing cocoa butter. So we're going to freeze the chocolate flour so it gets really cold, and then when you come out, you're going to pull it out of the freezer and airbrush it. So we're going to have to play the timing there. And as soon as you airbrush it, you get a fuzzy, bright color that should look really nice. All right, so keep your flour on the cardboard. Put your extra pieces. If you're going to make them red, put them on the cardboard with your flour. If you're going to make them green, put them on the plate or something else. If it works. Put them in the freezer. All right, the regular freezer should do fine. In order to make my life a little simpler, I'm going to take the cardboard out of the bottom of this entree before I start. So it's a little um, scary because you don't want to jam it, damage your chicon. So just kind of wiggle your knife in there very gently. I don't care if you destroy the cardboard. really going to coat well, so we're looking to pile it up. Hence why we built the entremet right side up. We got a little divot here where the mousse starts to contract as it um, freezes. So it gives you a little divot, perfect place for um, glaze. All right, so have a torch ready and have your glaze ready. Uh, about three and a half to four ounces, probably more like three, three and a half. Um, I do it by eye generally. And the best part about this glaze is it is a little forgiving. So if you don't put enough the first time around, you can usually get another little bit on there before it's too late. So pick it up and gently swirl it around. You're looking to get the raspberry glaze right up to the ring, but not over the ring. Which is easier said than done a lot of times. If you go over, just clean it up before you unmold. Going over is not a huge deal, but if you don't clean it up, it's going to make marks inside your entree. Now, I did a pretty decent job, but I think I can use just a tiny bit more in this area here. So on my second round, I usually try to pour where I want the glaze to be, not where I, not just in the center. And then you can pick it up again and just give it a little shimmy, shimmy shake. And that usually kind of evens out the glaze as much as it can be evened out. Now, you're always going to have a little bit of a lighter edge and that's normal but what I want to see is at least like a good basic coverage towards the center of, of smooth color. Take the torch really quick, turn it on again, and lightly hit the top just once to pop any random air bubbles. You're never going to get them all, just get as many as you can on one swipe. All right, if you torch too late you will end up with holes in your glaze because the bubbles will pop and they will not melt back together because the glaze is already set. So just make sure you get it right away, and then you should be fine. Now I'm going to let the glaze set. It will take a few minutes. Um, I may do other things while I'm waiting for it to set, but I have got to unmold it as soon as I can. So as soon as it is set, I will unmold. I will not say, oh, well, I'm busy. 
too bad. Um, you have to stop, you have to unmold as soon as you can, otherwise you, um, your mousse is melting and then you unmold it, it's squishy, it doesn't come out of the ring very nicely, okay? So you don't, don't think you can just let it sit forever. For your little guy, same basic idea, much less glaze. And like I said, if you spill over, just clean it up. for this process, I'll forgive you the, uh, the discretion, discretion because that whole ring thing it makes it hard. If you don't have a cardboard, you do have a little lip to grab onto there, but it still doesn't always work out. So, torch it, try not to torch the top edge. One swift motion. pretty firm on the bottom still. You should use your um, spatula for that last little bit. Center it nicely. You don't need any glucose or anything. There shouldn't be a cardboard under there, just the gold. And then pull it out. So it's really clean entremet because you don't have any of that glaze going on the bottom. Please do this on the turntable, not the wooden bench. Have you guys been to 401 lately? You see a big black mark in one of the tables? That was me. <laughs> I torched down, I didn't know it was on a little bit still, and I torched a huge hole right, right Not hole, but like a deep divot. <laughs> that was me. Use an extra cup as your uh, push mold here. Just pull that down. And then so find your seam and put that near the little tabby thing. Yay. Start with whatever you want to start with, green or yellow. So you're going to do yellow and red and green, so you know, whatever works for you. Take an airbrush.
and then again the um, you're probably just gonna have to press your hand. Hold it where you plan on sticking it into the entremet. So it's gonna be at the top of my leaf, that's the bottom, so that's where I'm holding it, and then just kind of hit it. The green doesn't show up as bright as I would say the yellow or the red does, so you're just probably gonna have to work at it a little harder, come in a little closer. I'm not looking for really dark colors, you're just looking for a the more these sit out, the more they start to condense, you know? So you kind of have to be aware that they're going to get a little bit damp. This is where the heat gun comes in handy. If, if there's a clog, usually it's just a little bit of cocoa butter that's like stuck in there. So I can usually adjust it and help you out. Pick your front. I mean, ideally there is no front because it's beautiful all the way around, but you know what it is, like a little spot in the glaze or a little nick in your jucon seam might not be perfect, so try to keep those things to the back. Um, that would be a nice one for you. Think, see how the glaze like drip a, a little bit? That's sort of normal. There's not much you can do about that. If it's any more excessive than that, it means that you put way too much glaze on your entree and it piled up way too thick at the rim and then it didn't set quite enough. Um, some people have gone around and cleaned the rim off because the rim of the um, entree will get a tiny bit of glaze on it. Some people have gone around and cleaned it up, find that to be more detrimental to the corner of your entree and sort of wrecks the corner as opposed to keeping the glaze clean. I'd rather see a little bit of that. Most people don't notice it. All right, so from here, find the front. Take some extra petals that are not good, whatever you got. Two of them is usually enough. And you're going to just use them as a little pedestal. So come in about an inch and a half, just sort of that back left, back right thing. And just put a little pedestal. It doesn't really have to be perfect, just something to kind of wedge the flower. If you have chocolate that's not solidified, you can use it, but it's not really necessary um, to glue. So ideally, when you touch this flower now, unless you have really hot hands, the color should not really come off too much. But that being said, I don't want you to like all over the place. Just try and handle it from the bottom. Slide that parchment right to the edge of the table and pull it down and eat the flower right into your hands, touching only the bottom. If you have any, see how I have some of these little like random pieces? Kind of pick those off if you really want to. And then carefully decide where front is, where the top is, and then just go in, settle it on your um, chocolate, and then slide it down to just barely touch your glaze. The glaze should be set, so you shouldn't sink in, and if you wiggle it too much, you might cut into the glaze, so just set it up this way, and then just angle it down, and it'll sit there, and it should stay, see, no problems. From here, you grab your leaves, and you just sort of wedge them underneath the flower and let them fall. I don't like to stick them into the glaze, I think it looks bad. Just know that the green potentially could come off on the glaze if you touch down and lift up again. So once you're down, leave down. All right, decide where you're gonna put it and go. So I just kind of wedge them in and let them fall. And they're like twisted and you can kind of do whatever you feel. I don't mind if they're sort of more natural than anything else. Just three is enough. All right, and then take a couple fresh raspberries and place those where you think it is okay. I don't mind in this instance if you guys want to line like one, two, three right up against the edge, not falling off, but just right at the edge, that's fine. Um, 
in that case, I don't mind it being very close because just a raspberry. I don't care either if you want to go this way or this way. I like to see the hole. It doesn't bother me. So I know some chefs don't like it. It's just their thing. But I just like to pile them up just in a random little pile of three. Sort of in the somewhat negative space of my entremet. And you can kind of make it however it works for you. And then that is the front, like right there. So you're looking at it. Okay? For the petite gâteau, you can kind of do whatever you want with your extra little things here. I'm just going to wedge this little guy in. My entree is pretty frozen right now, so it's going to be hard for me to garnish this the appropriate thing, but I'll do my best. No, no, that's not where I wanted that. So I guess I'm using two. Usually I only want one, so I'm going to cut one in half. See, because if I lift that and I leave it, you can see it. All right, so I screwed up, so now I have to pay for my mistake. So I've got to be creative, kind of do something so that I'm not looking at a big hole in my glaze, but I still have an appropriate varnish. All right, so something like that. doesn't really matter. 